Bob Thomas is retired and enjoying it. He lives on Cape Cod. He and his wife, Jean, are active and healthy. But for most of his life, a mystery nagged at Bob Thomas. 52 years ago, when Thomas was a young Air Force sergeant in World War II, a Navy commander saved his life, and Thomas never knew who he was. I always figured I owed him a heck of a debt. My family is eternally grateful that he showed up when he did. In the summer of 1945, Bob Thomas was a gunner on a B-29 bomber assigned to raids on Japan. On June 26, a Japanese fighter emerged from the clouds and sprayed Thomas's B-29 with anti-aircraft fire. The bomber was called the Dynamite. With two of its four engines on fire, the pilot turned the stricken plane toward the Pacific and ordered the crew to abandon ship. The B-29 ditched just 10 miles off the coast of Japan. Eight of the 12 crew members survived and then spent four long hours adrift in the ocean waiting for somebody other than the Japanese to find them. Fortunately, a U.S. Navy submarine called the Springer was patrolling nearby. With the war raging in the Pacific, it was all too routine for Navy vessels to be assigned to find aviators whose planes had gone down at sea. The commander of the Springer was a young Naval Academy graduate assigned to rescue the survivors of the downed bomber. No, it was just another job to me. I enjoyed doing it and was proud to be able to do it, but it was, it was just another job to me. And I knew the name of the submarine. I did not know his name. Thomas contacted a local newspaper to help locate the submarine commander. His search turned up John Bauer, retired in Pickens County, Georgia. After a 22-year Navy career, he had all but forgotten that particular rescue. I mean, it wasn't one of those things where I went around and patted myself on the back every day because I picked up an aviator. There's uh, seven of my crew members uh, in portable dinghies. When Thomas and Bauer finally made contact, the former submarine commander told Thomas that he just happened to have a color film of the actual rescue, shot from the bow of the submarine. Seven of the downed crewmen endured the four hours in the Pacific in rafts. But Bob Thomas wasn't with them. He was a mile away with no life raft and only a half-inflated life jacket. Well, I had to swim a little bit for four hours. Or not swim, but, you know tread water or whatever. In other words, it wasn't sufficient to hold me up. The submarine was in dangerously shallow water, unable to dive a fat target for another Japanese fighter. There's John Bauer, a much younger man than currently. Bauer, the submarine commander, knew there was another aviator in the sea. So I, I, I decided to give it a shot. So we, we went, in, went in and we, we found him. But we saw him and we saw that he wasn't moving too much. And so I, I, I had my swimmer, my best swimmer on board. Uh, I realized we had to get to him in a hurry. That's me way out in the drink. And there goes the designated swimmer, Bill Cott. He's going to pull in a very thankful Bob Thomas. I was about ready to, to uh, go under. I was tired. He'd been treading water for four hours. He was just about gone. But the young airman recovered, and the Air Force sent Thomas to the U.S. just in time to celebrate the end of the war with Japan. He returned to civilian life and has lived long enough to enjoy retirement and to learn the story and find the man behind the rescue a half century ago. In Cape Cod, Doug Richards, Fox 5 Eyewitness News.